All right, this is Job 20 and 15. He hath swallowed down riches, and he shall vomit them up again. God shall cast them out of his belly. Barakatayahal, Barakatayahal Shah. Barakatayahal, Barakatayahal Shah. Call her law, Yahweh Bashimi Yahweh Shah. All right, I don't know if you guys heard. There's a lot of fighting right now over in um, the 1948ers' land. You know? I mean, there's a lot going on over here. Over there, I'm gonna go ahead and play this. You got this uh, colonial situation going on, and then I did a video about a uh, a squatter, you know, squatting in uh, people's houses, you know, and then it's the whole colonial pipeline situation, which to me is an omen. So, and all this is like going um uh, like conjoined together with what I'm talking about. So go and check it out. You know, um, fair use, fair use. This is not mine. I'm not profiting from this. And, um, yeah, let's go and get into it. Hundreds of Palestinians have been wounded after Israeli forces raided the Al-Aqsa Mosque this morning for the second time in four days. Al Jazeera reports Israelis fired rubber-coated bullets, tear gas, and sound bombs at Palestinian worshippers. Video posted online shows explosives, possibly stun grenades, being fired inside the mass mosque, which is the third holiest site in Islam. A warning to our audience, this segment contains disturbing video. Reports medical personnel were initially barred from reaching the injured Palestinians. Eyewitnesses described a scene of terror when Israeli forces began opening fire while people prayed. We were praying in the mosque. Suddenly, the soldiers uh, get to the mosque without any alert. They started to uh, uh, shoot the bo uh, bombs, and uh, they are. And see, this happened um, earlier. You know, right now, current, um, you know, what's going on currently, currently, allegedly, guys are shooting uh, hundreds of rockets over in Israel. And then, you know, they got the situation going on with Iran. Remember, allegedly, they bombed some um, Iranian, um, I think it was a no, the, um, nuclear site. Remember, they did something to the nuclear site? Now, allegedly, a report came out. I don't know how true it is that um, Israel talking about um, you know, they they hey, they might be considering dropping, you know, one of the, one of those um, hey, one of those city destroyers, you know, that is what they did with Japan on uh, Damascus, you know. Now I don't know how true that is. That's allegedly, you know, from the uh, reports I've been hearing. You know, so yeah, let's go on um. You can watch this in your leisurely. It's not the part that I want to um, show y'all. You know, I'm gonna uh, show you the part that I really wanted y'all to see. All right, this is the um, story that I really want you to see. You know, and then you got this situation going on with this colonial pipeline. To me, that's like an omen. You know, it's like the Most High stripped these people power away. Every time they do something, he gonna he gonna make sure something else happen. And you know, really none of them heathens belong over there, but let's go and uh, check this out. For Israel to stop all settlement expansion in the occupied territories. We go now to Jerusalem, where we're joined by Mohammed El Kurd, a Palestinian writer and poet who's organizing to save his family's home in the Sheikh Jarrah neighborhood of Jerusalem. First, give us the overall picture, Mohammed, of what has been happening. Describe what's been happening at the Al Aqsa Mosque and all around the area, and then we'll talk about Al Jarrah, Sheikh Jarrah. Thank you, Amy. Yeah, thank you, Amy, and it's a pleasure to be here with you. To sum up what's been happening in Al-Aqsa Mosque, it's complete state settler collusion. There is, it's clearly that the Israeli occupation forces are working in service of the Israeli uh, settlers to terrorize um, and assault Palestinian worshippers in, in their mosque today. Palestinians have been met with rubber-coated bullets in the face and in the upper body, tear gas inside the mosque at the women and the children praying in there. 
in addition to many other forms of brute force. Um, the same thing is in Sheikh Jarrah, and this image becomes even more stark when compared by how um, the Israeli occupation forces are treating the settlers. Today, um, an Israeli settler ran over a Palestinian youth, and instead of being captured, the Israeli police um, raised his gun at Palestinians who are protesting this act of terrorism. So we're seeing clear state settler violence and clear state settler collusion in Jerusalem and occupied Jerusalem. And we're just about to see this next march. Can you explain um, uh, what, quote, Jerusalem Day is and the significance of this mass march? Definitely. It's, uh, it's, it's an infamous march that I've witnessed all every single year of my life, whereby Israeli settlers come from all over occupied historic Palestine and chant genocidal racist chants against Palestinians. They destroy Palestinian property. One time, a few years ago, I came home from school and I found the settlers sitting in, on my couch. This is the extent by which they behave because they know they have impunity, because they know they are going to suffer zero consequences from their state, who is a fascistic state to begin with. Hey, and see, you heard that? See, they covered his lands, you know? And here it is, he come home, a man sitting on his couch, you know? probably sipping on a Heineken or something, you know. But, hey, that story I did where, um, you know, that lady, her daughter died, and that man was uh, squatting in her house, driving um her daughter car around, spending her uh, cash up on her cars and everything, and then turned around and sued her. You know, and that's stuff that happened to us. So, see, this stuff is getting ready, get ready um, start happening to them on a high level. And, hey, they don't belong over there neither, you know. So, so th this is getting ready to all come full circle. You know, the most high is, um, hey, he's starting to cause everything to be turned upside down, you know. How old are you, Muhammad? I'm 22 years old. So I want to go to a video that's gone viral on social media. It shows your twin 22-year-old sister, Moon al confronting an Israeli settler who's been living in a part of your house in Sheikh Jarrah for 12 years. Jacob, you know this is not your house. Yes, but if I go, you don't go back. So what's the problem? Why are you yelling at me? I didn't do this. I didn't do this. But you It's you're... easy to yell at me, but I didn't do this. You are stealing my house. And if I don't steal it, someone else is going to steal it. No, no one, no one uh, uh, is allowed to steal it, Yammi. Can you explain? And you see that? Look, this, this is, you see, that's crazy. She got a man that been living at half her house, you know, because of all the stuff that's going on. See, this this colonialism, you know. See, the most high turning around, he had that the, the largest pipeline in America called the Colonial Pipeline, you know, pretty pretty much get shut down, you know. The same way he had the uh, Suez Canal uh, get shut down. See, uh, all this man stuff is going to start collapsing. And there's going to be one thing at another at another. When you think you get a little break, you get a little breather. He's gonna be like, nope. Then there's going to be something else, you know, and then eventually just all hell going to be breaking loose. That's how you know the elect is just about sealed. Actually, I believe the elect is already sealed. We just getting a one-third together called lawyer, how about Shimmy, how was y'all? But, yeah, she had a, a man living in one side of her house um, for the last 12 years, you know. And ironically, you know, all you got to do is put a red suit on him. And he look like he can come down their chimney or something. You know, but this is the madness and the vibration that this man had put pushed out on this planet. You know, whereas though, hey, he just practicing severe colonialism. Whereas though, he cut off one half the people' house, probably put car uh, cardboard up. You know, and he living in the uh, bedroom, and they got the living room and the kitchen. You know, that's madness. You know. In this scene, and talk more specifically about what's happening in Sheikh Jarrah right now. Absolutely. The scene, the scene that you saw, Amy, is a scene of colonialism. People often think that colonialism is this archaic concept or um, a concept of recent memory, but in fact, it's alive and well in Palestine. And this is a, a colonizer um, that happens to be from Brooklyn, as you can hear by the accent, who decided to find home in my backyard. Um, this happens because we, as a community of refugees in Sheikh Jarrah, have been battling billionaire-backed, often U.S.-registered um, settler organizations 
that employ these people to come and live in our homes and harass us and intimidate us. These people are not employed. These people are not families. They just come to terrorize us. Yesterday, our next door neighbor, Hajjaj's family, his roof was invaded by settlers wielding stones, bags and bags of stones. What's happening in Sheikh Jarrah today is nothing short of ethnic cleansing. Um, to help the people but just understand... To, just to Sheikh understand, I mean, this man uh, who is in your yard, this guy you said who's from Brooklyn, um, explain how this, your family, your house got half occupied in 2009. You're living with them? Yeah, I mean, yes, in 2009, we were coming home from school and we found that the entire neighborhood was on lockdown. It was besieged from all areas. And there were more um, occupation forces and settlers that, than there were residents of the neighborhood. And they used tear gas and sound bombs and sun grenades to take over our home. And these settlers, these thieves have squatted into in our home since then. And obviously you cannot resist this. Um, or otherwise you will be shot and killed. We know how the Israeli occupation forces behave around Palestinians. We know how they target Palestinians. But... And see, you, hey, you two-thirds, you're going to come home, and there's going to be somebody sitting in your house. And they're not going to leave the same way this is over here. You know, so what goes around comes around. See, these curses, they're going to start moving on these people. That's why I did that story yesterday. The man driving the lady car around, the lady already died. You know, hey... They they get they gonna get to see how that feel. Yeah, and if her family members weren't there, it, the Amma Amma look Kai he probably attacked that girl and beat her up. Yeah, you two thirds women, you threw. All right, this is Psalms one hundred four verse nine. Thou hast set a bound that they may not pass over, that they turn not again to cover the earth. Yeah, cause he gonna totally get rid of these people. You know, I mean, look at what look at what they doing. You know, they destroying everything. You know, they going in people's houses, staying in people's houses 12 years. You know, but hey, you know, we almost out of here. You know, because as you can see, slowly all hell is breaking loose. I wanted, I wanted to add that this is um, just a microcosm. You know, it's. I know it sounds bizarre that, that an Israeli settler um, is taking over half of my home and likely they will be taking over the entirety of the neighborhood should no international action be taken. But it's not as absurd when you put it in context of how the, the state of Israel came about. It came about by d destroying and burning hundreds and hundreds of Palestinian cities and villages and taking over Palestinians' homes. Today, all over historic Palestine, there are settlers who are living in homes that were once Palestinian. In response to the violent crackdown um, of Palestinian protesters in Jerusalem, Congressmember Rashida Tlaib, whose parents are Palestinian immigrants, tweeted this weekend, too many are silent or dismissive of our U.S. tax dollars continue to be used for this kind of inhumanity. I'm tired of people functioning from a place of fear rather than doing what's right because of the bullying by pro-Israel lobbyists. This is apartheid, plain and simple. Meanwhile... All right, look, I'm, I'm not going to get into all that. You know, um, you know, hey, they Palestinians, you know, the Most High said, you know, he going to cleanse the land. That's why them, um, them jakes that's being pushed out, they kicking them out, too. And they're going to live in their, they're going to live in their homes in Demona, too. They, sh they should be, hey, they, from what you're looking at, more likely they blessed than the Most High is putting them out, you know. So call her lawyer, how about him, because, yeah, how was you forgive me. Yeah, because he could be sick for now. It could be some of the elect among them, you know. That's why I did the story um about a week ago on that. And to me, it seemed like he spanned that he spanned their lives, spanned their children's lives, you know. So yeah, they better gonna get the hell out of there because it looked like it's getting ready to go down. They've been they've been fighting all day. You got this going on with the um, Palestinians. They beefing with Iran. Uh, China saying that um they might um launch a missile attack on Australia. You know, it's just it's just crazy. You know, and you know, if they nuke that Damascus, the Russia going to definitely get out. Russia and China, mainly Russia, because um, what is it, Alizir Bajar? He's the president of um, Syria and Damascus is in Syria. If they nuke, if they nuke that place, man, man, Russia ain't having that. You know, so yeah, you two thirds. You know, if you don't, if the, the, you know, the ones that 
still have a chance to be saved, you better start turning your life around because you might come home and might be somebody sitting in your house, sitting on your couch, eating Dickum Smacks, you know, and drinking your Kool-Aid. You know, so, um, yeah, just wanted to get this out to the family. You know, this man had somebody living in this house with him, and they wouldn't even leave for 12 years. You know, and he called this man a, a, a colonist. And it's kind of odd because he's from Brooklyn. All the stuff that's going on with Brooklyn, this gas running up um, to the Northeast Corridor, up in the New York area, shutting off half the uh, country. And that, that got the same name. So, yeah, I just wanted to get that out to the family. Um, whoa, Charlie swallows up chopper. Call her lawyer, how about Shimmy All right, I'm going to go ahead and get one more scripture and close out. All right, this is Isaiah 13. Verse 16 through 17. Their children also shall be dashed to pieces before their eyes. Their houses shall be spoiled and their wives ravaged. Because all the stuff that they're doing is going to come back on them. You know? And they're living in that damn man house for 12 years. So he, he, he probably, he, they know each other on a first name basis. And this guy said he was in his, his early 20s, mid 20s. Been in that man house ever since he's been a kid. Probably riding his bicycle, you know, and then doing other stuff. All right, this is uh, verse 17. Behold, I will stir up the meats against them, which shall not regard silver, and as for gold, they shall not delight in it. You know, their bowls shall also dash the young men to pieces, and they shall have no pity on the fruit of the womb. Their eyes shall not spare children. Hey, hey man, but these 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 people, man, they, they, they full, they're going to be full of rage, and they're going to just start, a, you know, they're going to let loose the fury of the Most High. You know, so, yeah, it looked like it's getting ready to be on and popping, so stay prayed up, you know, and um, ask you how about Shimmy Awash to keep your eyes open, you know, and stay on your watchtower. Just wanted to get that out to the family, you know. All right, so hopefully you was edified as I was. Call her lawyer, how about Shimmy Awash? I'll know on to the next one.